Hello everyone and welcome to the final newscast of the 2017-18 school year. I'm Caleb Bradley. And I'm Cassandra Garcia. Now this is a pretty busy newscast so let's get right into it with some of the activities that have been going on for us seniors. And first on that list is the Senior Variety Show fundraiser which proved to be a huge success this year. That's right, Cassie. Held on April 26, this fundraiser was meant to garner some monetary support to support the senior class to help them pay for the end-of-the-year events and field trips. Hoping to learn more about the planning and outcome of the show, we sent Matthew Graves out to interview Mrs. Osborne on how she thinks the show went. Take it away! Okay, so I'm here interviewing Ms. Osborne about her part and the seniors' part as a whole in the Senior Variety Show. So, Ms. Osborne, tell me. How did you guys prepare for the Senior Variety Show? Well, uh, the Senior Variety Show takes a lot of commitment um, with the students coming after school to do rehearsals. We had committees. Uh, we had the committee that put together the event itself with the acts that they were going to do. Um, the committee that did for the auction to generate all the items that we needed and keep track of that. And then the committee for the food um, so that we had dinner and people to serve the food as well. So those committees worked and we had some deadlines and we just worked around as much as we could with softball and baseball to make sure that, and other activities, to make sure our students could come to the rehearsals. Mm, okay, fair enough. Uh, how did the show go overall? The show was a huge success. Um, they made a good deal of money. I want to say $2,700 on admissions and dinner and then about $2,200 on or a little bit less than $2,200 on the auction and then you take out the money for the um, for the money that we paid for dinner and such and and they've still profited around $4,300 so it was a very good fundraiser and I heard lots of laughing so people really enjoyed the show too all right uh, how do you think they did personally I, I think it was great I mean I was sitting there I was supposed to be emceeing and being sort of serious but I was enjoying it so much that I just kept laughing too and, and really just being involved in the show because I think that they really came together and everybody really owned their parts and, and were able to be heard and um, they all just were very successful. Okay, and last question. Do you think the seniors had fun? I think in the end they did. I think that there were times where everybody was stressed out a little bit and they were not having fun. But I think at the end, that the whole event that night, that they had a great time. All right. Thank you, Ms. Osborne. That's You're all welcome. we got. Thanks, Matthew, and great job, seniors. In addition to the variety show, the staff scheduled a host of other activities to keep us busy. For example, later this week, all of the seniors will be attending the Senior Banquet, an important coming together of students, parents, and teachers to celebrate all the accomplishments our great seniors have experienced this year and during their time at LHS. After a fine sit-down dinner, seniors will be awarded recognition for their senior project paper and presentations, as well as class awards. The grand finale of the evening involves the distribution of thousands of dollars of scholarship money from state and local organizations. Many of our seniors spent the better part of their spring filling out applications, writing personal essays, and enduring some pretty intense interviews in order to help finance their college and career lives after high school. Good luck to all and a huge congratulations. Keep an eye out on the local paper and other news for the grand total of award money distributed. Yes, congratulations to all of us. We are so fortunate to have such a supportive and generous community. This is when all of our hard work for the last four years literally pays off. Absolutely, and now on to other school news. As many of you know, this year we had the, the good fortune to have an exchange student, Vicky Orichkova from Slovakia living with us. Yes, we did. While here, Vicky lives with the se these separate three separate families and got to see a quite lot of the United States. Though I think it's better to hear it from a young woman herself. So here's Matthew Graves with Vicky one last time. Matthew? Thanks, guys. So, Vicky, it's been a very long and eventful year here at LHS. So tell me, what did you think about our school, the faculty, the staff, the students? Overall, how did you like LHS? I really liked the American school system. It's like so much easier than what we have. And it just gave me like time to actually, you know, not really study hard, but to have like a not really relaxing year. It was not relaxing because of my English and everything was really hard. It was a, but, it was a mix kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but I really liked the teachers. They were really helpful, especially Miss Osborne, because she always helped me with my English stuff. And yeah. All right, so you kind of like the people here at the school. So tell me, what about the people at home? 
with your host families? How did they uh, stack up? What do you mean? How did you like your host families? Oh, I liked all of them because each of them was very different. You know, they have different traditions and different stuff. They do different. They take took me to different places, and I just really liked the fact that I was able to have three host families and see how they lived and everything. I am not going to pick up pick up my favorite because I like them all. All right. And what about America as a whole? I'm not going to bring up your travels or anything. Just saying, how do you like America as a whole? Like cities versus small towns. I feel like cities. People in cities are more, way more open-minded, and they want to see the world. Meanwhile, what I have noticed, people here are not mo about all about traveling. You know. They're a little bit more raised in hometown, stay in hometown. Yes. And more of a family type of people, you know, which is really nice sometimes. But sometimes, sometimes people just want to see different places, and I'm that kind of person. So, fair enough. Well, that's all we need. Thank you, Vicky. We wish you the best of travels back to Slovakia, and hope you have a nice and fulfilling life back there. And tell everyone how much you love hated America. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Back to you. Thank you. In addition to interviewing our homebound exchange student, Matt Graves has stuck to his usual piece of talking about the events going on with our local FFA chapter. Let's hear it, Matt. Thank you, Caleb. One of the more recent events that comes to mind was the Oilerton FFA Spring Banquet. Throughout the year, the local FFA chapter hosts several large banquets aimed at gathering together members and their families, and celebrating those few members who have distinguished themselves among their peers. At the Spring Banquet, all the members and guests gather together to celebrate that year in FFA with yearly awards and the installation of new officers being the primary focal points. On that note, the FFA officers for this latest year are Brock Griffin for President, Zaya Sarasola for Vice President, Rhiannon Brooks for Secretary, Brianna Rowan as Treasurer, Madison Kilmurray as Reporter, and Antone Lyson as our Sentinel. In addition to the banquet, the FFA has also been preparing for another well-known activity here, Farm Day. Every year in the end of May, all the Ag students temporarily leave their classes in order to host students from LES and guests from Tahoe and other areas to educate them in various activities pursued by our students. This year, each class period has been assigned a different station. Ag Leadership took horse. Ag 1 is doing food preservation, dairy, and goat cheese stations. Ag Mech is doing welding and vermiculture. Horticulture is being doing bees. And Ag 2 is doing parasites and sheep. We've had several farm days since then, with each going phenomenally. Finally, many students have already begun preparing for the Pluma Sierra County Fair by purchasing their fair animals. Every year, students buy the animals and care for them for several months to almost a year before a fair. While doing so, they train and feed the animals. Also, they can be sold at the fair. The animals are able to be sold there are steers, pigs, sheep, goats, and poultry. Rabbits and other animals can be shown at the fair, but cannot be sold through the auction. The current standings for fair participants are as follows. For poultry, there is Brock Griffin, Vinny De La Barba, Brett Sheridan, and Rochelle Smith. For swine, there is Carly Sheridan, Brett Sheridan, Bella De Barba, Anton Lyson, Sarah Fee, and Brianna Rowan. For sheep, we have Phoebe Griffin, Alana Colberg, Joseph Richard, Louise Lyson, and Rhiannon Brooks. Steer kids are Brock Griffin, Hunter Graves, Logan Gavin, Madeline Williams, and Candace Nursey. And finally, the single ag member taking GOAT this year to fair is me. Never fails. But that is all we have for this year around, so let me know. Say just one last goodbye. See you guys next time. Wow, Matthew, it sure sounds like FFA has been busy. Now that our news pertaining to school leadership and positive school culture, LHS's Peace Mediation Program is getting a makeover to meet the needs of all of our students. Thanks to a grant from the Sierra Schools Foundation and the motivation of teacher Jason Adams and principal Tom Jones, we are training a much larger group of student leaders to be uh, models for peaceful communication as at school as well as conflict mediators when problems arise between students. That's correct, Caleb. Late last month, a group of students grades 7 through 12 chosen to be a part of the peer-to-peer -peer support team had a fantastic kickoff meeting with their parents and school personnel and community stakeholders. Kristen Famula, co-founder and president of the National Peace Academy, presented on the future of the peace mediators and the role they will play in our school next year. The participants enjoyed activities geared to help people understand that conflict is a natural and normal part of human existence and can't be avoided. Next year, the group will be focusing on transforming conflicts for the betterment of our entire school culture. Now everyone's favorite part of this newscast, the sports section. Baseball, softball, and track seasons have come to a close with the baseball team doing extremely well with them going 16-2 and two over the season. Great job, guys. That means at the same time, the girls' softball team, with less success overall, going 10-7 and seven at their final game on May 15th, which was a loss. Sorry about that, Cassie. It's okay, Caleb. We all tried our best. In addition to us, there is also the track team, which continues to impress. One of their most recent meets occurred on May 18th, during which all the teams did exceptionally well. 
The JV boys placed third overall with member Damian Donnelly taking four medals home. Similarly, the girls did even better. They took first overall and in the division with Emerson Hood taking four medals and 38 points all on her own. Finally, and unfortunately, the varsity boys didn't do well as a whole, but senior Chase Barrow took first in shot put. Good job, guys. Yes, the 2017-2018 sports seasons at Loyalton High School were very successful, successful, and we will be celebrating all of our athletes at the sports banquet on Wednesday, May 30th. So on to one of the most well-known events of this year, the 2018 prom. This year, prom was held at Sierra Brooks Lodge in Sierra Brooks. This year's theme was Fiesta Your Way to Prom with Mexican and Latin American themes. Cassie, I understand that you were part of the planning process for prom. How did the entire event turn out? It was a huge success. We had a solid team of volunteers helping us set up for the event, and everyone pitched in and did a beautiful job with decorations and food provisions. What really stood out this year was the music. We hired a ter terrific DJ who knew how to get the crowd dancing, and the kids seemed to have a great time dancing the night away. I was really pleased by the entire event. Terrific, Cassie. The photos and videos coming out of the prom this year sure proved that the night was one to be remembered. Everyone looked elegant and the evening went off without a hitch. Additionally, we would like to congratulate Ezra Eberhardt and Madeline Williams for being the names of this year's prom king and queen. Finally, here's a huge thank to the LHS leadership class for all of your hard work. Well, what a wonderful year it has been. Caleb, it has been really great working with you this year on the Grizzly Newscast. It sure has been, Cassie. It's hard to believe our life at Loyalton High School is coming to an end. So before we say goodbye for good, let's listen to our seniors tell us about their favorite high school memories and their plans for life after LHS. I'm Logan Gavin, and my favorite high school memory is just spending time with my friends and being with them. After high school, I plan on attending Lassen Community College next year, I'm majoring in ag business, and I'm going to rodeo for them. My name is Madeline Williams, and my most fond memory of high school uh, goes all the way back to freshman year. It was my very first high school experience uh, ever, and it was the first day of school, and it was the first day of school rally, and I remember walking into the gym, and it was dark, there was music playing, uh, I got to see all the classes up on the bleachers, and it was just really cool for me, because I saw all the energy in the school, and it's really what made me fall in love with Loyalton. Um, my after school plans, uh, career-wise, I intend on becoming a lobbyist, moving to Washington, D.C., and hopefully running for Congress one day. Woo! Hi, my name is Mandy Truett, and my fondest memory of high school would be playing softball because it's always been my favorite sport, and introducing me to the high school experience was really cool. And my future plans after high school are to attend Butte and go into welding technology and hopefully play softball there too. Woo! I'm Madison Hood, and my most fondest memory of high school is sophomore year basketball when our basketball team went on the way all the way past playoffs and my plans for after school is to go to college and major in psychology. Woo! Hi, my name is Caleb Bradley. Uh, my fondest memories are all three basketball seasons. Uh, I really enjoyed my time there. Uh, after high school I'm going to be uh, going to Sac State and I'm going to study physical therapy and hopefully have my own practice after. Woo! I'm Cassandra Garcia and my fondest memory here at high school was uh, cracking jokes with all the teachers and being homies with them. And my future plans are going to Chico State and majoring in psychology. Woo! I'm Phoebe Griffin, and my favorite high school memory was probably going to San Francisco with the Culture Club. And after high school, I will be attending a four-year university and getting my major in elementary education. Hi, I'm Bodie Griffin. Uh, my fondest high school memory is playing baseball, and uh, I will be attending Feather River College because I have accepted a roster position for their baseball team. Woo! My name is Ezra Eberhardt, and my fondest memory was running track for Lothan High School. Um, and after high school, I plan on attending Channel Islands for psychology. Woo! Hi, I'm Benny Tidwell, and my favorite high school memory was probably playing high school football. What I plan to do after high school is wildland firefighting. Woo! Hi, I'm Sarah Fee, and my fondest memory in high school was going on all the FFA trips and participating in FFA. My plans for after high school are to attend Chico State for a major in mechatronics engineering. Woo! I'm Zane, and my fondest memory is all the parties in Corcoran's class, and uh, I will be going to college for Caterpillar and working for them. 
Hello, my name is Robert Shorey. Uh, my favorite high school memory would probably be being in film class and getting to know all that knowledge about filmmaking and editing and just becoming friends with everyone there. Um, and after high school, I am planning on going to TMCC to learn machining. And that's it. Woo! Hi, my name is Lucas Barnes. Uh, my favorite memory from high school, I would say, has to be as a whole senior year. It was very enjoyable. I was able to, I don't know, step out and did a lot more things that I usually wouldn't have done. Um, after this year, I'm going to TMCC and studying auto and diesel mechanics as well as business. And uh, there you go. My name is Joseph Winutka, and my fondest memories were making a meme cast. And my plans are going to Santa Barbara College and major in film. Woo! Uh, my name is Mason Johnston, and my fondest high school memory was playing uh, four years of football. And uh, after I, high school, I plan on attending TMCC to get my certificate of achievement in welding. Woo! Hi, I'm Veron Cavascus, and my fondest memory of high school was playing sports with my friends and after high school I plan on joining the Nevada Army National Guard and I leave for boot camp on June 26th. Woo! My name is Kayla Penn and my fondest memory over the past couple of years has been making films in this class and my future plans are to uh, major in sociology. Woo! So that's, that's a wrap. wrap. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning, tuning in to Grizzly, Grizzly News. News.